Now to do a newspaper layout, this is a great project for beginning designers, especially when you're trying to navigate in design and all the new features that it offers. So with this first project, we're going to create a newspaper page. I've given you the specs and I'm going to walk you through it right now. So first let's open in design. We're going to say file, new, and we need to open a new document. Now we're not going to use library, create a library, and we're not going to use books or folios. We're going to use a new document. And I've given you, look at the handout that I gave you. I've given you the instructions on what to do. The page size is going to be 11.667. 6667. The height is going to be 15 inches. And hopefully your increments are in inches that you've already watched the video that talked about changing your preferences. If it says picas or peas, then you need to go back and watch that video on how to change your preferences to inch, inches. Um, there is no bleed. There is no slug. Facing pages we do not want. We want to have our starting page, page 17. Columns, we're going to do 5. Gutter, we're going to do 0.1825. And we're going to keep our margins. It says um, five, uh, half an inch all the way around. If you don't see the bleed in the slug, it's probably because your more options was not selected. So you can select that and you see more options in this case, so we're not using bleed or slug. So that gives us a new file here. Um, the next thing we want to do is we're going to use baseline grid. And again, there's another video that talks about, introduces you to what baseline grid is. But in this case, instead of being 12 points, which is the default, we need to make our baseline grid 14 points. So if I say view, show baseline grid, it's going to pop up as soon as I zoom in. And right now, it's every 12 points, because that's what the default is. So what I want to do is I want to go to my preferences under grids and instead of 12 I'm telling you it needs to be 14 for this project. So if you notice as soon as I say okay these blue lines are going to get larger apart. So now they're every 14 points there's going to be another line. Alright, I want to need to make a text box. That's the next step. So I'm going to zoom in to where I can see my entire thing. Also, let's go ahead while we're here, let's open the PDF. All of your documents are going to be in your Dropbox under Publication Design Inbox, Project 1. Uh, if you go to Completed, this is what our final layout is going to look like. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is open this library. Now this library, um, what it is, is a place, it almost acts like a palette on the side over here. And it can be a palette, you can like stick it over here on your palette and it can stay there. And what it does is you can put certain elements, either design elements, logos, color swatches, whatever, you could drag them into this library and it saves it and it stays open. So even if you close this InDesign file, this library is going to be here. And if you open another InDesign file, this library is going to be here until you close it. And you can just drag whatever you dragged into this back out. And it's a way for you to keep things that you are constantly using or consistently using. So in this case, I want to drag in this borders And this is something that I've already created because I wanted to have kind of a baseline for this project to start with. So the only really requirement you need to do is when you drag it over, you need to make sure it's set at half an inch and half an inch. And that's all there is to that. And you'll see as, as I zoom in, all it is is it's the, the word news brief. It's that line. There's going to be this photo caption or um, the photographer's name and then this line at the bottom. That's just our starting point. So that's the first thing we need to do is just open the library. Then Now that I'm done with it, I'm just going to shut it. And again, it's going to sit right here. Um, 
until I need to use it again and then just click and open it. So if you notice I'm hitting the pretzel or the command key in the semicolon and that turns on and off my guides. You can also do it right here. Hide guides. Show guides. And then also, even when I hide the guides, I have this blue box showing right here. I don't like that. So I always go in there and just say hide frame edges and I keep it that way. I never switch back and forth. Notice as I zoom in, the baseline grid shows again. So, I'm going to show my margin because this is where I'm going to draw my box. Remember, this is what it looks like. So the first thing I want to do is bring in this text box right here. And it's going to line right up with my grid, my baseline grid. If I just take my text box, for the time being, I'm just going to draw a box. I don't know how deep to make it, but you see it's blinking right there. It's ready for me. It's saying, okay, where do you want to type? Well, I can either start typing it in, or in this case, I have supplied you with all the text you need. So you say File, Place. Let's go back to our Dropbox, and let's find our Inbox, Text Files, and we're going to need Story 1. And here it is. So it drops it in. Right now, it's actually my text box is showing not just the headline, but it's also showing the, the body copy. I want to shut that, shorten it so that the body copy doesn't show. Now, we know it has more type in that box that's not showing, and the reason I know that it's got this warning, this little red warning signal down here. That's good to know, because it lets you know, even if you can't see the type, there's something there. So what I want to do is I want to connect this box with a new one. This box, I want it to flow into another box. All I have to do is click on that little warning, that red warning button right there. And now you can see this is a continuation right here of the text that's not showing. I'm going to click and drag and just create another box. And there it is. So now this box and this box, they're linked together. And if I were to come down to this box and say select all, you can see not only did it select the text in this box, it selected the text in the headline box as well. Alright, so let's look at our final piece here. It looks like we have that, but this needs to be in four columns. One, two, three, four. That's easy to do in InDesign. You click on it, the box, and right up here, all I have to do is go one, two, three, four. Oop. And there it is. Alright, now if I shorten my text box, it forces that type to flow into the next column, the next column, the next column. I'm not going to go too crazy because I know I need to bring in, um, I have a text box, now I do need to bring in this photo. So my instructions for that are, we did a, a text, we did the create text box, now we need to format the text. We'll do that before we go into doing the text box. So if I have this type selected for the headline, and I look at my paragraph styles, paragraph styles, if it's not, if they're not showing, this is what they look like right here. If for some reason you, you had this up here and then you closed it and it's no longer here, all of these palettes right here are available here. So it would be under type, I don't know, it would be under styles, paragraph styles, and it'll pop back up. And again, you can just drop them anywhere in here, and there it is right here. Right here. So this, this is my headline type, but it's got a plus by it. This is my newspaper body, but it's got a plus by it. The pluses aren't good. The plus means that it's not really the way you designed your style sheet to be. We're going to talk about style sheets in more detail later on. But for right now, what I want you to know is if you have a style sheet that you're using and it has a plus by it, I want you to click this button right here. 
this clear overrides and selection and get rid of it. Same thing. Get rid of it. Now, the cool thing about a paragraph style sheet is if I have this type selected and I click on newspaper body, it shrinks that type to be that size. If I click back on headline, it makes the entire paragraph that headline. So that's exactly what I needed to do. I wanted to make sure my text was formatted here and my text is formatted here. All right, now I need to draw a box. I can use either one of these tools. It doesn't really matter. I'll just use this one. I'm gonna draw a box and I give you the dimensions for the first box. It needs to be two columns. So all I have to do is click, drag, it kind of snaps to my grid, which is a great thing. I drag it over to two columns wide, and then it says it needs to be 5.125 inches tall. Well, to change the measurement of any box, I can use the width here and the height here. So it needs to be 5.125 inches tall. And there we go. It says it needs to be filled with 10% black, so I need to go to my uh, swatches palette, click on the fill button right here, fill it with black, and make it 10% tint right here. It needs to have a border, so I click on the border, stroke icon right here. It needs to have a stroke of 0.75, so I'm going to go up here and I'm going to type 0.75, and then it says it needs to be 100% black, the tint is 100%. So that's the perfect size of my um, first text box. And then I want to bump it up. I can, I'm using my little arrow key, and I want it to line straight across like that. Only problem is my type is going back behind my photo box. So the way we resolve that is we need to go to text wrap. So I need to click on this photo. And then this is the text wrap palette. If, again, if you don't see it, go under window and, and just select text wrap and it'll show up. So click on this box. And then right now there is no text wrap on. I'm just going to click on this and it's going to turn text wrapping on. And what it does is it kind of makes a magnet and it repels this type from this box. All right, this type is underneath this box because I drew this text box first and then I drew this photo box on top of it second. So this box is sitting on top of this box. That's why this type is wrapping underneath this photo. If I were to take this photo and send it to the back behind this text, then it is no longer wrapping. Because now I have a text box, and a, a photo box, and on top of it I have a text box, and it's not wrapping. If I click this type and send it to the back, now the type run is doing a text wrap because my text is underneath this box. This is happening because we earlier had changed text wrap only affects text beneath. That allows us to control whether we have the text wrap around it or we have whether we don't have the text wrap around it. I want control, so I'm going to wrap the text. All right, so <clears throat> that is, we're almost there. Now we need a caption. Right here, we need a caption. Oh, I just opened my Skype accidentally. I need to draw another text box. I'm going to say file place. I will get photo caption one and bring it in. I already have style sheet set up so I can go to the paragraph style sheet here. Photo caption, there is no plus by it so I don't have to do anything special. I'm going to bring this over and drop it right up underneath that caption. Uh, the photo, the only problem is I need to put a text wrap on this as well. So I go to my text wrap, put it underneath that. I need a little bit of space here, so I'm just gonna make my, my box taller. 
and then I want to shorten this up until everything lines up. Now this right here should look just like this. All right, so things are looking good. If I want to see what this looks like without the guides, I hit the command semicolon, or I call it the pretzel semicolon. And I, I just want to optically make sure that this and that look like they line up together. So that's how you bring in text. That's how you bring in and link two text boxes together. That's how you draw a box. That's how you turn on text wrap. That's how you bring in another box and make captions. That's the basic step of getting started. So this is one of the stories. There's two more stories that need to be done and this sidebar. So that's going to be the main part of this project. And what I want you to keep in mind is everything needs to line up properly. Everything needs to be on a grid. When you're bringing your type, I'm going to turn off the baseline grid. I usually do not use look at it. I know it's there, but I usually don't look at that because that will drive you crazy. But when you're drawing a text box, I don't want it to be sitting like this. Grab this middle handle and make sure it snaps to the grid. Same thing with this. Make sure this is snapped to the grid. So, good luck.